Hey, what's up guys? My name is KSK Ryle. Welcome back to another video. In this video, I will show you how to do boot Ubuntu 20.04 LTS with Windows 10. This guide is one of the safest ways to set up a do boot on any PC or laptop without any data loss. Also, at the end of this video, I will show you how to remove Ubuntu 20.04 safely from do boot. So make sure you watch the video till to the end without missing any parts of the video. Now keep in mind, this method is only for legacy BIOS users. For those who are using a BIOS MBR combination on their existing desktop PC or laptop, then this method works flawlessly. As per my testing, if you follow this guide carefully, you will be able to successfully do boot your PC or laptop with Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. The prerequisites of this video, you need a Windows 10 running on your PC or laptop. Next up, you need an 8GB or higher pen drive to create a bootable media with Ubuntu Linux. Lastly, you need to reserve a free space of 20GB or higher from your drive. That being said, I'm moving into step number one, downloading the required files. Now open your favorite browser and go to the official website of Ubuntu Linux and download the latest version. By the time of recording this video, Ubuntu 20.04 is in beta, so I'm going to download Ubuntu beta for this video. Ubuntu 2020 will be released on April 23rd and can be available from their official website. Next up, you need to go to Rufus website and download the Rufus tool which helps in creating a bootable disk with Ubuntu Linux. Then lastly, go to this link and download the SD Formatter. SD Formatter is a piece of software which can be used to format and prepare the drive for creating a bootable media. Go ahead, download the SD Formatter zip file and install it on your Windows PC or laptop. Step number two, creating a bootable drive with Rufus. Now once it's done downloading all the files, place it somewhere on your computer for easier navigation. Now go ahead and connect your pen drive to your PC or laptop and open SD Formatter. Now choose the drive letter of your pen drive and format it. Now once it's done formatting, it's time to burn the ISO image into the pen drive using Rufus. Go ahead, right-click on the Rufus and run as administrator. Now inside Rufus, choose the drive letter of your pen drive. Now in this case, my drive letter is showing here. I'm going to leave everything as a default. Then under the boot section, click on the select option to import the ISO image file. Now go ahead and look for the Ubuntu image file in your computer and open it. If you notice the partition scheme is set to MBR, it means Rufus has detected my PC is using a BIOS and MBR combination. I'm going to leave everything as it is and then click on start button to burn the ISO image into the pen drive. Sit back and relax, the process will take some time depending on the writing speeds of your pen drive. Step number three, partitioning a free space for Ubuntu Linux. Now, in order to set up a dual boot to install Ubuntu 20.04 along your side with Windows 10, you need to create a free space for Ubuntu. To do so, open run and type cmd. Now, inside command prompt, type a diskmgmt.msc and press the return key to open disk manager. Disk manager is a place where it shows all of the connected drives to your computer. Now, in this case, I have connected only two drives to my computer the drive 0, which is my SSD, and the drive 1, which is my pen drive. I'm going to use my main drive, which is a drive 0, to shrink a free space for Ubuntu. If you notice carefully, inside this drive, I have only two partitions. The one is named as system reserved, another one the main C partition. I'm going to use a C drive to shrink a free space. Now in your case, you can shrink the free space from the last partition. So right click on the partition and choose shrink volume. For Ubuntu 20.04, you need at least 25 GB or higher. Now in this case, I'm going to allocate a 30 GB of free space for Ubuntu Linux. Now as you can see, the free space is showing as unallocated, which is where we will be installing Ubuntu in a moment. Step number 4, installing Ubuntu. Now go ahead and reboot your computer. While rebooting your PC or laptop, press F10 on your keyboard to open the boot menu. Now in here, you can select your drive name. In this case, it is showing my drive as SanDisk. I'm going to choose this option to boot Ubuntu Live Setup. 
You can only use this boot menu option if your pen drive is not automatically booting into the live setup. Now when you are inside the live setup of Ubuntu, go ahead and click on this install button option. Then choose the language. So in this case, I'm going to use English as my default language and then click on next. Now for keyboard layout, choose English United States as default option. Next up in this section, I would choose the normal installation that installs all of the basic tools. For now, I'm going to uncheck this option to speed up the installation process. Now make sure you tick this option to install any third-party media codecs as well as graphic drivers and Wi-Fi drivers. Then click on continue. Next up, it shows the installation screen. For starters or beginners, you can choose the first option that will install Ubuntu along the side with Windows 10. And the second option helps to completely erase disk and install a fresh copy of Ubuntu on a brand new hard drive. You can also use an experimental ZFS option so for Ubuntu 20.04. For those who are installing Ubuntu on a separate drive, this option would be helpful. For now, I will be using the last option called a something else. Then click on continue. Now in here, you can see your drives and the free space which we have created in Windows. We're going to use this free space to create a two partitions for Ubuntu. To do so, select the free space here and click on plus button. First, we're going to create a root partition so that I will allocate a 25 GB for root partition. And make sure the partition type is set to logical volume and use the XT4 file system. Now choose the mounting point as forward slash and click on OK to create a root partition. Now once again click on the free space and then click on the create button. We're going to use this remaining space for Linux swap. Basically swap memory in Linux is nothing but a virtual memory. If your system is running out of physical memory, it will gonna use a swap partition to store memory addresses. And make sure under the file system, instead of xt4, choose Linux swap. And you don't need to mention any mounting point for this partition. Then click on OK to create a Linux swap partition. And lastly, we need to install a grub bootloader. This is where many people make a mistake. Now many users try to override the Windows bootloader with grub by installing in the system reserved partition of the main drive. This will potentially cause many issues for beginners. To avoid messing up the Windows Boot Manager, we can install a grub bootloader into the root partition, which in our case is forward slash dev forward slash sdb5. This way it won't override the Windows boot configuration data. Go ahead, choose the partition from here. Now once you have done selecting it, click on install now option and accept the changes. Now go ahead, choose your time zone and create a user account by entering the details. Now sit back and relax, the installation process will take 5-20 to 20 minutes depending on the writing speeds of your drive. Now once it's done, go ahead and restart your computer by removing the bootable media. As you can see, by default, it won't boot into Ubuntu Linux. That means we haven't messed up Windows boot configuration data, which is a good sign. Step number five, configuring dual boot. Now, in order to access Ubuntu, we need to add an entry to master boot record using an easy BCD tool. Go ahead, download and install the EasyBCD, a free software from the link in the description box down below and open it. Now inside EasyBCD, choose Add New Entry option, then select Linux from here and use the type as Grub2. This is the standard one for many Linux distros and name the entry as whatever you want. Then click on plus button to add an entry to the Windows boot menu. Once it's done, select the Edit Boot Menu options. From here, as you can see, the Ubuntu Linux is added to Windows boot menu successfully.
You know, under the menu options, I'm gonna set a countdown limit to 20 seconds. Within 20 seconds, if you don't select anything while booting, Windows 10 will load by default. Now once it's done, save the settings. That's it, now go ahead and reboot your computer. Now here, you're gonna see Ubuntu Linux added to the boot menu. Simply choose Ubuntu Linux to boot into the new OS. As you can see, Ubuntu 20.04 looks awesome, everything works like a magic. If you want to know what's new in Ubuntu and all the top features, I will leave a link to the video in the description box down below. Go ahead and watch it. And that's it guys, this is how you do boot Ubuntu 20.04 with Windows 10. And the last and final step, removing Ubuntu from do boot safely. As a bonus part of the video, if in case you don't like Ubuntu and decided to uninstall it, then reboot your computer back to Windows 10. Now inside of Windows, open Disk Manager by typing this command. Here you can see a next to C drive, there are two partitions are visible. The one is a root partition, another one is a Linux swap partition, which we have created earlier in the Ubuntu Linux setup. Just gonna go ahead and delete these two partitions carefully one by one. Once it's deleted, you can see an unallocated partition. You can extend this free space into a Windows OS by using an extend volume option. Once it's done, now go ahead and open EasyBCD. Now inside EasyBCD, choose Edit Boot Menu, then select Ubuntu Linux Entry and delete it. Then choose a BCD repair option and select recreate bootable files for Windows by selecting the second option and apply it. Now this way you don't stuck into any grub errors. That's it, now we have successfully and safely removed Ubuntu from Duo Boot. Now if you reboot your computer back to normal, you can see it will straight up boot into Windows OS without showing any boot menu. That's pretty much it, if in case you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down there and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and consider hitting the bell icon to get notified whenever I post a new video. Thanks for watching, this has been KSK Ryle, I will catch you in my next video. Peace. Yeah, I can never ever find the right words And there's no way this is real life there's no telling you're the right girl So I can only say that it feels right